Special Super Class, let's review the zero factor property. The zero factor property says that if A and B are factors of zero, that is A times B is equal to zero, then either A must be zero or B must be zero, or I guess they could both be zero. Think about it, that must be true, right? We can't take negative one third times two and get zero, or 16 times 23 and get zero, or two thirds times negative six and get zero, right? One of those two things, if we're multiplying them together and we get zero, one of those two things must equal to zero. Let's do use that. the zero factor property to solve this equation by factoring. This is a quadratic equation, and there are more, there's more than one way that we can solve it, but let's go ahead and solve it by factoring. So, we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals to zero. We'd like to think of two numbers that multiply to give 6 and add up so that they give us 5. Now, if you want to be sneaky in here, you can even put the signs in. So we want them to multiply to give 6 and add up to negative 5, or you can put the signs in at the end. Your choice. So the first things I think of are all the factors of 6. So the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Which of these two add up to give 5? Well, <coughs> it's pretty clear that these are the two that would add up to be 5, right? Because 2 plus 3 equals to 5. So now we can factor this. The x squared will factor into x times x. And then the 6 will factor into 2 times 3. Now, what are we going to do about the signs? This sign is positive, so we know that these two signs need to match. If we put plus and plus in here, then this sign will be off, right? Because we'll get plus 3x and plus 2x when we FOIL it out. So instead, we want to use two matching negative signs. And this equals to 0. Don't drop this. For some reason, students tend to drop the equal 0 here, but remember, it does belong. So now let's check out and make sure that our factorization worked before we go any farther. x times x is x squared. Then x times minus 3 is minus 3x. Minus 2 times x is minus 2x. And minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. You can see that this adds up to minus 5x. And can you see that that's the same polynomial or quadratic equation that we started with? So now let's use the zero factor property. If this whole thing, you can think of this as being like A, and this whole thing, you can think of this as being like B, multiply together to give zero, then either the first part, x minus 2, must be zero, or the second part, x minus 3, equals zero. zero. So x minus 2 equals zero. Since we're subtracting 2 from x, we have to undo subtracting 2, so we add 2. Of course, in math, we do that on both sides, which gives us x equals 2 as one solution, but in a quadratic equation, we're expecting two solutions, so let's look for the other one. x minus 3 is 0. Since we're subtracting 3 from x, we want to undo subtracting 3, so we want to add 3. Of course, in math, we do that on both sides. So our solution would be 2, 3. And we Hi, super class. Let's solve by factoring. So here we have x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals to 0. So we want two numbers that multiply to give us 8 and then subtract to give 7. How do we know it's subtract? It's because this sign is negative. So let's look at the factors of 8. They are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. 2 minus 4 gives us negative 2, or 4 minus 2 gives us 2, so that cannot be it. But if we think about this as 8 minus 1, that will give us 7. So let's use that to factor. So here the x splits into x times x, and the 8 splits into 8 and 1, 8 and 1. Now, in order to make this into negative 7x, we need to think of 8x and 1x. Which one should we give the negative sign to to make it negative 7x? Well, if we were to give this one the negative, then we would get, as our result, negative 7x. So now, this negative one, we want to put that in front of the 8. So we don't want to try to squish a negative here in front of the x here. That could make it seem much more difficult than it is. Remember, these two signs have to be different because negative 8 times positive 1 gives us negative 8. So that gives us a plus 1. 
And then, of course, you remember to put in the oh, equals. If x minus 8 times x plus 1 is 0, then either x minus 8 is 0 or x plus 1 is 0. So how do we solve for x here? We add 8 to both sides. So x is 8. And how do we solve for x here? We subtract 1 from both sides. So x is minus 1. So our solutions are 8 and minus 1. Did you get that? Good job, class.